Hello everyone, my name is Mimi79. Today I've got round number 5 of the FIA, FIA Manufacturer Series. So as you can see there, 288 points on offer. So you can probably tell that this isn't perhaps as competitive a lobby as earlier slots. Because this was the final slot I did and I did all 5 of them because I knew I had good pace. I mean, I got a top 10 time around here. Although that was before the BOP change which slightly nerfed the Jaguar so I'm not as confident I can get a decent result but in all of the other slots before this I'd completely messed up qualifying so now I've got to try and at least salvage something in the last slot of the day but also in other news I've made a discord server so it'll be the first link in the description and also the pinned comment so check that out if you want to and we could continue the chat after uh, the video of the live stream is ended. It's, it's a really cool place because you might see some familiar faces. So if you do join, I'm sure you'll feel right at home. So qualifying then, very important around Bathurst because while it is a very slipstream dependent track, it will be very difficult to try and find your way past. But as we begin our qualifying lap here, I'm just dipping two wheels onto the grass, not exactly the best way to start your hot lap. But as we go into the first corner, braking just on the shadow going across the ground. I did mention that in my lap guide. And it is a very important brake marker, I feel, because you will be using that consistently throughout the race. But as we go into sector number two, and doing a 20.7 which isn't bad considering the fact that we're not in slipstream but as we go into turn number two just get two wheels onto the curb you don't really want to do that you want to try and avoid the inside curb as much as possible because it is quite slippery and then through here maybe a bit too conservative and then just getting a little bit of oversteer on the exit probably scrubbed off maybe a tenth or so because you're completely flat now until this next left hander so it's a very tricky corner dipping two wheels beyond the white line on entry just hitting the bump there and that probably cost me a tenth or so and then through here really committed you've got to use the inside curb if you really want to maximize the lap time but here going into the depot keeping it nice and pinned to the inside and if you could hear that with headphones you might just be able to hear a grazing sound and that's how we got one second penalty it's quite stupid because it really didn't gain me all too much but we mess up the forest elbow anyway and we are going to have to serve this one second penalty however I think at Bathurst you do have to really nail the third sector but we're gonna go again the ties still aren't completely unusable so again, same brake marker for turn one, and then quickly the apex as nicely as possible. But in fact, I've missed the apex very slightly, and that probably cost me a tenth or so. And you'll see here as we go into the second sector split, it will cost me almost two tenths. And this is important for later on in the lap. But as we go into sector number two, really committed into turn two, you have to be because you're flat now until the cutting just up the hill. So you put two wheels beyond the white line on entry and then really committed on the brakes, clipping the inside and then through here it's obviously completely flat until the left hander. I think it's something to do with the park but I can't quite remember. I know that the left hander afterwards is McPhilamy which is the last sector of lost corner of sector two. So much better through there this time and then slightly missing the apex and probably lost a tenth and then almost losing it. So probably lost about a tenth there in total. As we go into the dipper, making sure that we don't go two wheels beyond the white line or four wheels beyond the white line even. And then through the forest elbow, keeping it nice and pinned to the inside and powering out on the exit and we are just gonna whip it forward down the Conrod straight because it is so long and into the braking zone clipping the apex very nicely and then powering out on the apex because in group 4 the 
cars are very stable, so you can really afford to push the limits in that regard. So into the final corner, braking just after the 100 board, clipping the apex nicely. And on the run to the line, it's going to be a 2 minute 11.5. And I was relieved to get that lap because that was the first time that I actually got a semi okay lap in in five slots so I was very happy with that but obviously it wasn't the best lap I mean if we just hooked up sector one much better I think we could have got pole position but as we begin the race drowned out by the roar of the jet engines flying above we are going to obviously start on the mediums because it is the only tyre available and obviously it will be the only tyre mandatory no pit stops in this race because the pit loss is far too long and I think in that regard it needs to be shortened quite a lot because I think it, it, it would work if the races were a lot longer like 45 minutes plus but unfortunately that isn't the case and it's a shame really because to make a long pit, pit loss work you definitely have to have a longer pit loss or a longer race to make a longer pit loss work but as we go up the hill then all over the back of the German in the Corvette very strong car over one lap but in the race it does struggle with front tyre wear but as we go through the mountain then just hitting the wall and that is going to be very important because we could lose the slipstream but as we go down the hill because the leader is going so slowly through there we are going to close right back up and it's like we never it's like we just left off well we're carrying on where we just left off really before that mistake but as we go through the forest cell we're clipping the apex very nicely avoiding the wall on the exit and it's a four car train immediately and this is very important because we don't want a huge crowd to swarm this little pack and the German was actually going very slowly I feel in the braking zone and I just nudged him twice there and perhaps I could have avoided it but in my defence I will say that he did brake a little bit too early although that could be a combination of me braking too late and the German braking too early early but obviously it will happen as the race goes on because it is a 16 lap race so you're exceeding well over 30 minutes because each lap is about 2 minutes and 12 seconds or just under and over but it is a very long race you've got to keep your head down and really stay focused and obviously it's a no stop so looking after tyres is key now I think in this race we could have done with a much less harsh time multiplier I think we could have done with times one or times two because then it would it wouldn't really make the tires as much of a difference because I feel as though if you're gonna have a no stop race at least make it a sprint race so no tires or fuel to worry about because honestly it's really unenjoyable to race on completely dead tires but that's just my opinion, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But on to the start of lap number 3. We are all over the back of map like VJ and we're just going to break a bit too late. We're going to have to go to the inside. We're going to keep it in third gear and we're going to let the Frenchman go back past. That was a completely accidental move, did not mean to do it whatsoever. And we hold station in third position. But as we go down the back straight, we are slowly gaining on the leader who, cut, who caught a bit of a breather there because he almost broke the slipstream. But the German actually makes a bit of a mistake there, running a little bit wide in turn number two. But as we go through the cutting and up the hill for the third time in this race, it's obviously very crucial and it's very imperative that you don't make any stupid errors in the mountain because it will lose you a lot of time especially in group 4 cars which are quite a bit slower any mistake will be sorely felt but as we go into sector number 3 really nailing 
uh, the left hander quite nicely with McPhillamy and into the cutting which is losing a lot of time because I feel as though the French have had a slow in fast self philosophy on entry to the dipper and uh, to be honest it was working quite well for him throughout the race but as we go on to the back straight of the Conrad straight once again we are just going to skip forward to that number 5 because it's a very uh, common occurrence of Bathurst in the longer races Slipstream trade will fall but Matt Platt going down the inside and he's just going to took it ahead of VP Pat Home is it? so yeah it is a slight change of formation but again things will change quite a bit in this race but I think at this point as well I need to try and get past the German because I think the tower is just starting to set in for him because that Corvette does not like the front tires he likes the front tires as much as Russians like homosexuals so yeah not not the great situation I suppose but as we go down the mountain then for the fifth time the pretty standard stuff using a bit of the curb on the entry to each corner and also on the exit it's also very crucial I keep using that word it's also very important there we go that we stick with the leader because we can't let them get away especially on a slipstream track where slipstream will make up like half a second every single lap so if you can stay in the slipstream you will gain a lot of time unless you completely mess up the mountain section but as we go down the Conrod straight then we're just tucking in the slipstream and it doesn't look like much is going to happen into the braking zone we're just gonna stick behind try and protect the tyres as much as possible because this is a tyre saving race pit stop is obviously far too long because of the recent adjustments and in my personal opinion I think that they should be halved on all tracks simply because it just it's just way too long at the moment it, it will only work with longer races so 45 minute plus but with the length of the races right now a uh, long pit loss just will not work so skip it forward to lap number nine then going down the mountain once more and just clipping the apex very nicely and as we go onto the Conrad straight once again we are a lot closer to the German than we have been previously and at this point the Brit behind uh, we've completely dropped him the gap's about two seconds to him now but as we pull alongside we're going to be on the outside line for a little kink but the German just lets us through and we move up into second place we go a little bit wide there but we managed to retain our position and we are in second place and as they stand we would gain about 276 points which would be absolutely mega for our points total which at this moment in time was sitting at around 200, no, 460 I believe so any improvement would be absolutely mega especially if we try to achieve S rank this season obviously I won't be eligible for it but it would just be nice to have that option available but as we go down the second straight then or the first real straight of the track the German's actually going to work with us he's just going to stick behind and we're going to try and catch up with map light who is about 1.6 seconds in front of us so we've got quite a bit of work to do to try and catch up with him there because he is quite a quick driver so it'll be quite tricky to reel in that gap especially with no slipstream to help us whilst we sail through the mountain the Jaguar went quite decent through here simply because it's so stable a lot of, of the mid-engine cars are very shaky as we go through the section dip into us onto the grass but no real issue but as we go into the dipper then just keeping the car pinned to the inside and then using a little bit of the curb on the exit and we haven't lost too much so far only about two tenths but if the German behind bump drafts then we will be gaining a lot more so as we go here 
it wants more down the back straight it's gonna be same old same old with just try to catch up with the leader because I feel as though there's not much I could really do right now I need someone to sit behind and use as a clear reference but we get a bit of a bump there and Pabs was a bit too late into kind of onto the straight and we missed our braking and the German goes past and it doesn't look like we've lost much but as we go into Murray's corner we've just got no grip and we've got no traction either so we've probably lost about an aggregate, aggregate of I don't know 8 tenths of a second so as we go into turn number one how corner just no grip and the German has broken our slipstream already and now the Brit behind has also managed to get my slipstream so it's a bit of a double whammy there but as we just skip forward a little bit uh, trying to close up to the German we've actually managed to keep the gap around 9 tenths and the Jaguar is slightly better than the Corvette the straight line even with the power reduction so if we can manage to get within three quarters of a second three quarters of a second we should be okay but as we go into the chase it's a very tricky corner to get right and you have to really avoid the curves breaking a bit too early there and we lose about two or three tenths in the braking zone and that's going to allow Noblowski behind to really close up the gap as we make our way towards the start finish line then to begin lap number 12 it looks like that any chance of a P2 is pretty much gone because the tyres at this point are really starting to struggle as you can see that on the bottom left the front tyres are really suffering because this is a front engined car obviously a lot of the weight will be on the front wheels so it is going to be tricky to try and hang on there so tried to block off Nabloski there maybe moving a little bit too late and I will perhaps accept responsibility for that and should have probably stuck to the racing line because I don't think a move would have been on even if he, I didn't stick to the inside but as we go through the mountain not the best of runs just keep it a bit too pinned to the inside we're going to skip forward then into the end of lap number 12 and in fact we've got about four and a half tenths of a gap to the Jaguar behind but it's not going to be enough really because of how long the straight is and especially up the hill that's where you're going to lose a lot of time because of the acceleration or lack of acceleration but you can see that that Jaguar even with the power reduction is still absolutely wrapping in a straight line I'll be covering him off there perhaps a little bit too late once again and he tries to go to the outside but just managed to block it off then as well and we keep our position for now but it's definitely clear that he has better pace at this stage in the race the tyres are not feeling good and perhaps it's down to my poor tyre saving skills and that's something I definitely need to work on in the off season and it's something that has held me back as well as poor qualifying it's a mixture of both has led me to not have the greatest season I don't think and it's, it's annoying because I feel as though I'm definitely getting quicker but it's just a couple of things holding me back that I really need to work on so as you can see there Nablowski looking around the outside but it just doesn't quite work unless you're fully alongside before the corner and we managed to hold on so as it stands we will be on for, for our first podium in split three which would be quite a special feeling but as we go onto the back straight the gap's about half a second so it's a slightly bigger gap than it was on the previous lap but even still it'll be very tricky to maintain our position so as you can see that the gap just closing uh, even more but he looks to the inside but it's just not quite going to happen but we break a little bit too late and we go a little bit wide and Nablowski going to look for the cutback and he's going to go to the outside but we're going to stay to the inside and we're going to have to give him space but he could look for a cutback and it 
looking very close here as we begin lap number 14. The lap times at this point aren't really relevant, it's about keeping that third position. So as we go through Hell Corner, very tricky because of the little kind of inclination on the apex. So it's very tricky to judge, you have to really nail the line to get it absolutely perfect. But he goes to the outside here and he's pretty much fully alongside. So I'm going to have to give him room. I break as late as possible. And I'm going to have to leave him the space. And he's still got his nose alongside. And as much as I would like to turn in. So much I can really do. Try and hang it around the outside. But it just won't quite work. Annoyingly, even though he got pushed out. It's going to be a 0.5 second penalty. Which I don't understand. Because you don't gain anything from running wide. Because you're going to compromise your exit. Or your entry to the cutting. But as we go through the mountain then, uh, as we go towards McPhillamy, he makes a bit of a mistake and we've got to go for this move, we've got to be aggressive now because we have to serve this penalty and as annoying as it is, it's going to have to be served and as we go down the mountain and the tyre is really not feeling good, uh, mainly down to poor tyre saving I think, if we just saved the better I think we could have definitely had a better chance at this one. But we get a much better exit than the Bloskin. In fact, we're about to break the slipstream. And this just makes it even more painful that we got that penalty. Because we would have had some breathing space for about half a lap or so. And as you can see, it's just going to sail past because it's at the start of the straight. So you're going to really feel the after effects for the whole straight. And the gap was about... 8 tenths behind and now he's about 4.5 tenths in the front and he's just got much better tracks and it's not looking like we could salvage much out of this but we are still in the slipstream and if he makes a mistake anything can happen he misses the apex very slightly then and that's going to allow us to close up a little bit but the gap is still about half a second really just over half a second but as we go on to the penultimate lap trying to get the best exit possible but there's just no grip left and the gap opens up by about another tenth and it's very very close to being out of the slipstream range and this is about as disastrous as Tottenham Hotspur's form recently in the Premier League but again we've got to try to stick with him as much as possible but just there running a little bit wide and just going to have to allow us really forcing me to accelerate later and that's us out of the slipstream range and that's pretty much any chance of a podium over but as we go up the mountain there's just no grip left but we do have a sizable enough gap behind to the point where as we go on to the final lap we are going to hold on to P4 and it's a really good result but it's just annoying that it took so long to achieve especially after doing all five races but, I mean, I'll take it regardless. I did improve my points tally. So if you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications. Don't forget to join my Discord server in the link in the description. But yeah, leave a comment down below for feedback. But take care everyone, and goodbye.